Is it time to change the filament in your printer? You're just not sure how to go about it? Well, join me today as I go through two different ways to change your filament. One, when you're out of filament and not in the middle of a print, and the other, when you're in the middle of a print, what you can do to try to keep that print going without losing your print. So, see you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today's video, as I said, changing filament. We're gonna cover basically two types of filament changes. One is just the direct, we need to change our filament out because we're at the end of a roll or we wanna go to a different color and different things like that to make sure we're changing it out correctly and safely. The other one is a mid print change that we're gonna cover. Now a mid print change can be, you wanna change colors in the middle of your print, you're just running out of PLA and you really need to save your print. Either way, that one is a little bit more tricky depending on how you have your printer set up and how you're doing stuff. My prints, I control with an octoprint, so pausing a print for me is really simple. Some printers will not let you pause a print in the middle and do this. So it's kind of one of those things that's important to make sure you're able to do this before you're in the middle of a print. So let's move on to the first one that I'm going to show you, which is just a straight up change my filament out for a different filament. Um, in this example, I'm going to be changing out. I need to change to uh, PETG transparent filament for a print job that I'm doing. So we're going to switch out from straight PLA and go to the transparent and basically show you how the best way to keep your PLA as well. So let's go back to the printer. Okay guys, here's the inner three I'm talking about. We're gonna get this changed. So the first thing we need to do is we need to preheat the printer because any filament that's in there that's down in the hot end, we want it to come out with the rest of the filament. So if you just try to yank on it, you're gonna break something. You're gonna either break your bone tube, the filament itself is gonna break, or it's just gonna become a real big mess where you gotta take everything apart. We wanna avoid that. So preheating does that for us. So we're gonna move over to the screen. You're gonna see the preheat steps. We're gonna get that hot end heated up to 215, which is what Inland PLA normally prints at. I'll pull the filament roll back out. Then we will run a little bit of cleaning filament in because I'm changing filament types. So I don't want the PLA and PETG all nice and meeting up in that hot end. So I want to try to get as much as the PLA out as I can. That's where this stuff comes in nice. So let's move over to the screen and we'll start getting this printer ready to heat up. Okay. And as you can see, here's my Ender 3 screen. So we're going to go, we're going to click, we're going to go to prepare. Then we're gonna scroll down. Now I am running the TH3D firmware because I have the Easy ABL bed leveler, but yours should look exactly like this. TH3D does give you the change filament, but we're not gonna do it their method. We're gonna do it the real way. So you'll go to preheat PLA and preheat PLA end. Now that's gonna start to heat up. It's only gonna go to 200, but my recommended temperature for inland PLA is 215. So what you'll do is you'll click again and go to control and you'll go to temperature and you can go to nozzle and you can actually turn that up manually. So I'm gonna turn that up to the 215 that I want it at so I can get an easy pull. Then I'll go back to control and I'll go to main and then info screen. Now all we need to do is wait for that to heat up to 215 and we'll begin the pull process. I'll join you when that's heated up. Okay, we've got the printer heated up to 215. So now it's time to get the old filament out. Now, I've got pretty much a full roll, so I'm not gonna have that hard of a time pulling because I have filament to grab onto, but if you've run out of filament, a lot of times it will be up in here in the boating tube where you can't get it out, which you'll just have to undo your boating tube at your extruder. And then you should be able to get your a pair of pliers or something on the end and pull if you've heated it up properly. So let's zoom in and see me pulling out the filament. All right, so we've got the extruder. It's all still attached. It's kind of hard to see. I'm gonna take this knob off. And you can see that the filament's in the extruder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to press here and take the pressure off the filament. Then I'm gonna gently just start pulling and it should just pull out like butter. And there we go. So my filaments take off. Try to keep your roll as well as you can without letting it get tangles. And then if you're gonna be storing this for a long time, dry, clean place is the best thing you can do to store this filament. So now I'm gonna push in 
some cleaning nylon filament just to try to get what PLA I can out of the printer. And actually to do that, I'm gonna take this off. I'm not gonna push it through the extruder. I'm just gonna push it clean in myself. You don't have to put a lot of pressure or anything. This is a kind of nylon, so it has a lot of flex. But if we come down to the nozzle, you can see me pushing out old PLA. So we don't really want that as part of our, our PETG print. So basically we're just cleaning the printer out of the bad filament. This is kind of a slow, tedious process. But you can see it's getting clear, which means we're getting the cleaning filament. So I'm gonna pull that back real quick. As you can see the cleaning filament, we got that bulb of just goo that came out of the printer as well. I'm gonna not get too close to the nozzle and just grab that trash away from the nozzle. Make sure my nozzle's good and clean. So that's two steps. Step number three is inserting the new PLA, the new filament. So a lot of times filament will come and it'll be taped on the side, especially with inland. Make sure you cut behind the tape. Now this is a roll that I've used before. So there's some grinding marks on it where it's been in the printer before chewed in right there. I wanna get behind that. One trick I've learned is cut it at an angle. Usually it tends to feed a lot better like that. So cutting that at a sharp angle tends to help out. So I'm gonna load my spool on the arm and I'm gonna try not to tangle this. I'm gonna feed this into the extruder. I'm gonna release that arm again so that it can feed on through. You'll see it coming out right here. So now I'm gonna put the Bowden tube back on. Sometimes you have to take the Bowden tube off, sometimes you don't. Um, I just find it easier to take it off. Now I'm gonna just push that on through. And get that down to the nozzle. I wanna make sure my filament's up on my roll. I'm not hung anywhere. And actually at this temperature, it will push some of the filament through. And actually, you should start seeing red come through, which is what you want. It pushed through some more of the cleaning filament and there comes the red, which is exactly what I want it to do. Now we'll go over to the control panel. And we'll go back in, we'll go to prepare. And we'll scroll down to cool down. That's it, you've changed your filament. Okay guys, here's round two of the printer problem. Now, I'm gonna have to talk really loud because this printer is just loud. Um, this is an Ender 3 V2, and as you can see, we are getting near the end of the spool and we are in the middle of a print. Well, I need to make sure I don't run out. I'm not going to, but this is for the video. So basically what I need to do is I need to pause my print and change my filament real quick. Now, some printers, you can actually go to the control panel and pause and actually let you do this method. I don't rely on that method. I use AquaPrint, which you can see my Raspberry Pi connected here, which gives me an interface that allows me to control my print. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hit pause and that will pause my print head. So, being very gentle and taking your time, because everything is hot, do not move this bar, whatever you do, or this will fail your print. Gently pull your PLA back and unload your printer. You gotta be very gentle, very slow. Make sure you don't have a problem. Make sure not to jostle anything, because if that bar moves, your print's ruined you won't be able to get back to where you were going. So I've got that off. I'm putting on some green PLA. Uh, just happens to be a roll I had in service and I wanna use. And we'll get this guy on there. I'm gonna thread it back through the extruder, being very gentle, making sure not to move my X axis in any way. And I'm gonna push that through till I can't. Now you might get a little blob on your print from you pushing this through to the end. That's okay. All right, we've got it loaded. So now we should be able to come back to Octoprint and hit resume. And the print should kick right back off. 
Now this is a kind of a cool method to save your print, especially if you're doing a very, very large print on your CR-10, then what that'll do is you can keep going. You can use more than one roll of PLA, which is actually pretty awesome. But and we'll follow up on this guy when it's done, see if it's a success, a success or a failure. But the key thing is you gotta be very gentle. Don't let any of this move. Don't even let the print head move. If you're getting resistance or something like that, you are probably gonna have a problem. Now, every printer is different. The original Ender 3, you couldn't do this pause very easily, but Octoprint gives you the ability to do that. As you can see, I was just controlling that from my iPad. Um, this little guy is connected to my wireless network, takes control. If you're interested in Octoprint, go on back to one of my other videos that shows you how to set that guy up. And even has links to the Raspberry Pi and everything that I use to do this. So. We're letting this print the rest of the way. I think it only had 8% left to go in the model. We're gonna let this finish printing. And I can actually already see the green PLA on the top of it, which is really awesome. So this one's gonna be multicolor for the example. So, um, cause this little guy goes to my camera mounts that uh, records all the time lapses. You, you guys see, I need to raise them up a little bit cause I made some changes to my printers. But that's a quick way to mid print, change your PLA, like I said, you just gotta be very gentle, but I think the Ender 3 V2 and the CR10 V2 do allow you to pause from the control panel. Every printer is a little different, so make sure you have the ability to do so. If not, I recommend getting yourself an Octoprint and getting, honestly, just taking full control of your printer because you can add a webcam, watch your printer when you're out of the house, all kinds of functionality that this little guy back here gives you and lets you have control of. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. This was just a quick tutorial on two ways to change your PLA when printing and when not printing. And mine's not the only way to do it. So I hope this kind of helps you guys out, especially if you're just getting started with printing. Um, now, all right. And as you can see, we managed to save that print with no issues. So changing out in the middle of a print, while it's not fun to do, it's doable. Very much so thanks to the Octoprint Raspberry Pi that lets me control my printer, lets me do it pretty smooth. Um, like I said, some printers do have the ability to do it mid-print, but you can definitely see the difference. And it doesn't look like there's any flaw in it at all, which is actually really nice. Now, next video, we're going to talk about this guy. So this is a 3D printing pen. This thing is awesome and has a tons of uses. If you're getting into 3D printing, I recommend you get one of these guys, especially if you're wondering what to do with the end of your spools and just leftovers, different things like that. Join me in the next video as I show you how we use this, not only to save models that are printing live, but also make models with just this or even fix done models. So we'll see you guys in the next episode. Remember, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. We will see you next time.